One of these days, I'm going to get something to put on the wall behind me, add some pizzazz to this shot, I'm used to being in that little tiny window in the corner, and, you know, the video game takes up all of the attention, not just me. Anyway, what's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and today I'm going to tell you why my name is Attack Slug. Every single time that I do a question and answer video, I get the same questions. Number one, how'd you meet Grimm? Number two, why is your name a tax slug? So instead of spending like 10 to 15 minutes attempting to explain that in a Q&A video that should obviously have more than one Q and more than one A, and because I figure you guys watching this video on my second channel are the hardcore fans who might want the full background story, I figured I would do this video here. And hopefully, through the magic of editing, I can make this not be super long because I have a tendency to ramble on and over-explain things because I'm not very good at sound bites. So the story begins in 2006 when I was living in a studio apartment in Peoria, Illinois. And as to why I spent a couple of years in Peoria, Illinois, I will say that when you meet girls on the internet, shit happens. But putting that aside... I spent a lot of my time reading the internet, playing video games, and going to work. Now this all ties into nerdcore hip-hop, and if you are not familiar, it is a subgenre of hip-hop about nerdy stuff. In 2006, I thought the only person doing that was MC Funnelot, who I had been a fan of for a number of years, back from when he had done a collaboration track with Compressor, and that's a whole different discussion. But one day, I'm on the internet reading my news, reading Slashdot, and I see an article about Rhyme Torrents, about a four CD collection of nerdcore hip hop. And I'm like, wait, there's more of this? So naturally, I fall down that rabbit hole. I start discovering a slew of new artists. And I start to kind of ingrain myself into that community. But you see, the thing about Nerdcore is that it is very much a DIY deal. It is you have a computer and a microphone and some ideas and you're good to go. But additionally, and especially in that, you know, 05, 06, 07 era when everything was starting to kind of coalesce, a lot of it was so bad. It was earnest and it had passion, but the actual fidelity and the skills therein were just not very good. And as someone who had never particularly considered making music, I looked at it and went, I could do that. So at the time, I had a Mac Mini with GarageBand, went out and bought a microphone, and started writing music. But of course, if you go down that path into making music and rapping and whatnot, you need a name, you need a brand identity, you need something for folks to call you. I mean, you can't be Prince and just have a fucking symbol, right? And there was one thing I wanted to avoid, right? So, at the time, 06, the biggest names in the Nerdcore game would have been MC Funnelot, MC Chris, MC Lars. And so a lot of the people who jumped on that Nerdcore bandwagon in that year, in that era, were all picking MC this. It was like MC Pterodactyl and MC this, and it was just, I didn't want that. Above all else, I wanted to be able to set myself apart and not just be lumped into that M category, because you look at the Nerdcore thing and just a million freaking M's at that point. That's just too easy, and it's been done to death. So I looked for inspiration from my all-time favorite video game, Earthbound. And if you haven't played Earthbound, it was an RPG on the Super Nintendo set in the modern day, and is generally regarded as one of the most unique RPGs of all time. And so I was literally looking through a list of the enemies in that game to see, okay, what can I pull from this game that might work as a artist name? Because that game has a lot of weird enemy names. The Clumsy Robot, The Bad Buffalo, Insane Cultist, Manly Fish, Master Belch, you get the idea, it's a weird game. And so I'm literally, I have one page open that is the enemy list, and one page open to register a website domain. Now keep in mind that 99% of Nerdcore at that point was on MySpace. It was free and you could upload your music. But again, I wanted to be different. I wanted to set myself apart somehow. And as I'm looking through all this stuff, I just see a tax slug, and that just seemed like a no-brainer. I don't know. When I was in high school, I was really big into Marilyn Manson, right? And the idea of the diametrically opposed archetype I found fascinating. 
So putting together attack and slug, which kind of don't go together, seemed alright. So I had my domain, and then I went and got the domain, I had the MySpace, 07 I got the YouTube, 08 I had the Twitter, any kind of social media that popped up, I went and got that name. So at that point, I'm kind of in the thick of things in the nerdcore scene. I was administrating the Ryan Torrance forums, and pretty much anyone in kind of that old guard in that initial era when nerdcore seemed like it was gonna blow up any fucking second knows who I am. So, moving on to 2008. I spent all of 07 just making some very bad music. But little by little, I got a little bit better. And early 2008, I totally fucked up my back at work. I used to be a merchandiser putting soda on shelves. And that injury gave me more time to focus on music stuff, right? So 08, I put out Ensville is Burning, and I put out Achievement Unlocked, and people seemed to pretty much generally enjoy those. And I was like, alright, this is going great. Kind of up until early 09, I was still doing things here and there, working on music, etc, etc. And then a bunch of real life shit happened, and I had to move a couple times, and the whole, my, my living situation got all screwy. I couldn't really record music anymore. I did manage to put out a 5-track EP in 2010, and that was alright. And granted, I was still writing a lot of it, I just really didn't have an avenue to record it. Now, 2011 was the first time, and perhaps the last time, I was ever live in concert. I got booked for two shows in Philly for some strange reason, and there's some footage of that on this channel. And then 2012 was kind of the genesis, the, the origins of Grimm's Toy Show, and I was there from the beginning because I had known Grimm and Rod and Todd and them since, like, middle school. And we had been hanging out watching wrestling for years. So when he started doing that whole YouTube thing in the beginning, I was there, I just wasn't on camera. And I'm not really sure why I didn't want to be on camera, I can't really recall the exact reasoning for that, but I was like, no, you guys, do your thing, have fun, I'll be over here behind the camera. And what ended up changing that was the fact that YouTube has a thing called multi-channel networks, which by the way are bullshit, don't ever join one. But those networks kept contacting Grimm to, hey, sign up with us and do video game stuff. And he's like, I don't own any video game stuff. Now keep in mind, at the time, the content ID system wasn't really rolled into YouTube. It was all copyright strikes. And he was very afraid uh, if he did any video game stuff on his channel, he would get hit with strikes and lose the channel. Now obviously since then, things have, have evolved into a content ID system where they don't take your channel away, they just take any money that you'd make and give it to the rightful owners or fucking whatever. So I was like, look, I have a channel, I have video games, let's do a thing. And so January 2013, Perplexing Pixels happened. And so literally at the beginning, I was putting up one video a week on the main channel of just that and seeing how it did. And much like how I spent a lot of time learning and improving when I was doing nerdcore hip-hop, uh, go back and watch those, those original like 20, 30, 40 episodes of Pixels and look at the ones now and see how vastly different the production quality is. But I had other stuff going on, so that was like a once-a-week thing. It was fun, you know, and just kept it going. Now, I did get into a better living situation in 2013 and was finally able to take essentially two albums worth of music and put it all out there October of 2013 and almost nobody cared. Unfortunately, the scene in Nerdcore had changed so much from 08 to 13 that all that attention that might have been there had I been releasing consistently in between those years was just not there anymore. So little by little, I focused less and less on music and more and more on YouTube. And basically, it got to the point where I was like, I'm going to try this. 2015, I'm going to upload every damn day and see how big I can make this. And I think the results more or less speak for themselves. Between January of 2015 and now, leaps and bounds in terms of subscribers and views and everything else. So that's basically been my journey from discovering nerdcore hip-hop all the way to making YouTube content every day. And I'm sure there are some parts that I've forgotten because 11 years is kind of a long time. But the bottom line is this, if you're going to get into any creative process, 
and you need to choose a name for it. If you have a project, you need to choose a name for it. Think very hard and very carefully about that name because if you gain any sort of recognition, you're stuck with it. Once you build that brand identity, once you get that recognition, the last thing you want to do is change that name and confuse people. So basically, for better or for worse, I am stuck being a tax slug. That fateful decision of choosing that name and registering that domain has got me here. And as a final side note, this thing, this orange hat, the whole orange m motif, total accident. I have been a fan of Korean hip-hop, and more specifically, Drunken Tiger, since like 05. And when I finally found some official merchandise to buy, this was the only color in stock. And so it just kind of ended up being the trademark. Even when things happen by accident, you take it and you run with it and make it work. So there you go. I am your host, Attack Slug, and that's why. More videos all the time. I'll see you next time right here on this channel and the main channel, and I'm out.